why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first? Well, my name is Father Brendan Greeny. I'm a Redemptorist priest, and uh, most of my missionary life was spent in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, my first assignment was in Brazil, and I was very fortunate when I was ordained to ha have a, a pastor that had patience with me because I didn't know the language, so I only had to prepare one sermon a month. Mm -hmm. And I would give it in four different places every weekend, and that helped me because it was really hard to prepare that one sermon. Now that got me started and gave me confidence in preaching in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and after a while, you get to be better at it. I became a redemptor because I was in living in Brooklyn, a redemptorist parish, and we had the St. Joseph nuns teaching the school, and they supported the redemptors very much. Uh, the redemptors took care of the school. Well, one priest would visit every now and then. But the sisters encouraged vocations, and they told us what they invited other seminarians to visit the school when they were on vacation and to tell what it was like in the minor seminary. So I was interested. I don't think I ever asked permission of my parents mm -hmm. to go to the seminary. I think I sprung it on them one day, said, I think I will go to the seminary to become a priest. And they just nodded their head. And a number of years later, uh, my father said to me, Brendan, if you don't want to go back, continue on. The door is always open here for you. I said, Dad, I want to go back, but thank you for saying that. Mm. And that was very nice. Yeah. As I said, I arrived in Brazil with only four weeks of one hour of a day, a day Portuguese mm. study, and I really was no good. But I could read catechism Spanish when I went down there. That was about it. So language was going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And I was terrified of the thought of having to give a sermon. Mm. You said you had a pastor that helped you out in that yeah. department. How el What else was different and about, Portu about the Portuguese, about Brazil, about learning well, the language? Well, the, uh, it was like the place I went to was on the border of two countries, Paraguay and Brazil. I was on the Brazilian side, and the parish was enormous. Mm. We had a chauffeur that would drive us to these different chapels, some would be an hour and a half, two hours away, and you sleep in the chapel overnight. And the people didn't know that much about God until the Redemptorist missionaries arrived there. And before I left this, I went back to the same place as pastor years later. And one of the old, older men told me, he said, Father, we weren't really too civilized when the priest arrived here. You made us civilized and you brought the Catholic faith to us mm -hmm. and we appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. But, you know, when, I guess when you're starting at zero mm -hmm. and you just tell them, you know, there is a God that loves you and he loves you not because you're a very good person or uh, it doesn't matter how you are, God loves you anyway because you're his son or you're his daughter. Mm -hmm. And parents love their daughters and sons, mm -hmm. and God loves us that same way. And he wants us to do a few little things. He said, well, we should love one another, mm -hmm. and so if somebody offends you, forgive them. That's the main thing you have mm -hmm. to teach people. Mm -hmm. So. You get enthused about teaching people when you see how they like that message, mm -hmm. that there is somebody, and you know, you teach the Beatitudes that you're not, 
It is a blessing when you don't have everything. When you're poor, when you have to struggle, it is a blessing from God when you have to fight over difficulties and sickness. It's a blessing from God when you have the difficulties in raising a family. It's not a sign that God's against you. And, you know, people like God's message to us. That's the good news of the gospel. When I was in this... I think the seventh and eighth grade, I used to leave school and drop by in the church because the church was on the same block as the school. I'd stop in and the front bench of the church was a prayer to know your vocation. I used to go in and some other friend of mine used to, we used to kneel there in the first bench of the church and say that prayer and then leave. Just kept praying. And all through the time, the seminary, I used to pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. I said, help me be a good priest. I want to be a good confessor. I never want to give a sermon in my whole life, but help me to be a good priest. And I figure she gave me what I asked for and something I didn't ask for. Then when I went to Brazil, I said, Mary, you take care of my family here in the States, and I'll take care of your family in Brazil. And I feel she fulfilled her part of the bargain, so I feel I am still fulfilling my part of my the bargain. Mm. Mary took care of my family, my brothers and sisters. My parents died, but I was able to see them before they died, so everything worked out.